Good morning. I'm Reverend Dr. Christopher Allen Bullock, senior pastor of the Canaan Baptist Church. I want to invite you and your family to worship with us every Sunday, 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11 a.m. at the Canaan Baptist Church, where the worship is wonderful, the preaching is relevant, and the singing is moving. Above all, people love God. Join us not only on Sundays, but also every Wednesday, dinner at 5 o'clock, and worship on Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Come and be my special guest and enjoy the Canaan Baptist Church worship experience. Again, this is Reverend Dr. Christopher Allen Bullock, pastor of the Canaan Baptist Church. God bless you. Hope to see you soon and keep the faith.
Salvation is dominated by the flesh, living a life that is not pleasing unto God. Pre-salvation, we found ourselves drifting in decadence, darkness, and dehumanization. Before we met Jesus, we had no hope. We had no positive prospect for the future. You may have had money, but you didn't know the man. You may have had a house, but you didn't have a home. You had a wedding, but not a marriage. There are a plethora of things that we could talk about before you met Jesus. But thank God, we're not what we used to be. Somebody talk to me. Thank God. God has transformed your life, yes, yes, yes. made you a new person yes, yes. on the inside. Yes. And since you have met Jesus, what's next after you say, I give you my hand and my heart? Yes. Before we answer that question, there may be someone listening today that is still drifting in the decadence of sin. Sin is the willful disobedience against God's word, his will, and his way. We were born in sin and shapen in iniquity. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you may be wondering this morning as you consider your soul status. What must I do? Nicodemus raised that question. What must I do to be saved? Paul answers and says, confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. That God raised Jesus from the dead. Confess with your mouth. In other words, make a public pronouncement that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Make it known in a public situation. 
that I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Confess with your mouth that Christ is the only remedy and solution for the sin problem. Is there a witness in the house? Confess with your mouth. Tell it to the preacher. Tell it to the people. Tell it to God that I want to be changed. My heart needs to be changed. My mind needs to be changed. I tried the rest. Now I'm going to try the best. His name is Jesus Christ. Confess it. Tell it. You know, we can talk about a lot of things. We are an oral people. We can talk. We have a lot of conversation. We talk about a lot of things and a lot of people and a lot of things and our experiences and our journey. But if you've been changed and if God has signed your name in the book of life, you ought to tell that as well. But let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Paul says, confess with your mouth. And believe in your heart. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. Uh, out of the heart is where God wants to come in and permeate and move and to come in and suck with you. Jesus says in Revelation 3.20, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. This morning, God is knocking on somebody's heart. He said, let me in. I want to bring you joy. Let me in. I want to bring you peace. Let me in. I want to bring you salvation. Let me in. I want to change your life. Let me Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. I submit to you, beloved, that Christianity is based on the death, burial, and glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. I said Christianity, the foundation, the formula, is built on his resurrection. For he did get up from the grave. He did rise on the third day. He did defeat Satan. He did take back the keys to heaven and earth, life and death. He did rise early on the third day. I wasn't there, but I believe. I wasn't at the cross, but I believe. I wouldn't sit with Mary and Magdalene and John and all the disciples, but I believe. I didn't go in the tomb with the angel, but I believe. I was not there when he got out of the grave, but I believe. I believe that it happened, and if you can believe that, thou shalt be saved. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your sins were buried in the grave. And when you rose, when he rose, we got up with him. With all power in his hand. Power to change your life. Power to give you a new appetite. Power to give you a new perspective. Power to not to pout but to pray. Power to walk by faith and not in fear. Power to forget your past, reach for your future, and press on in Jesus' name. Power. There's power, wonder-working power. Somebody help me preach this morning. I said, there's power, wonder-working power. He got up. Are you glad about it? 
he got up for your sin. Past, present, and future. We talk about saved. We use that language. We've been using it in the church for years. But I want to tell you what being saved really means. That the work of God through Jesus on the cross reconciled us back to God. Jesus was our substitute. He shed his pure blood. He gave his life as a ransom for the wages of sin. He took the burden. He accepted the pain. He died so we wouldn't have to die in our sin. Oh, bless his name. If he had not went to the cross, we would have no hope for eternal life. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever is that whosoever in here the no D, the PhD, and the GED the whosoever the red, yellow, black, and white the whosoever the convicted, the afflicted, the whosoever, whosoever believeth in him won't perish but have everlasting life. And then he rose that we may have new life. Therefore we become saved if we accept and confess and believe in our heart then you are saved. Saved from the domination of sin. Saved from the enslavement of sin. Saved from the dominion of sin. And whom the Lord sets free, we are free indeed. Free at last. I assume there's some saved folk in here. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, because of the cross, because of the grave, because of the resurrection, we are free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Now the question is, after you're saved, what's next? What's 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 next? Romans twelve tells us what's next. There are four or five things in verse one and two that I'm gonna cover over the rest of the month. And I want to give you one this morning. After you say then what's next? Because there are a lot of folk who confess Christ, believe that God raised him from the dead, and they believe that's the end of the process. And I want to tell you there's a few more steps. Paul says, I beseech thee, therefore, brother, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I want to deal with Romans 12 and one word in Romans 12 and one present. After you're saved, there must be some presentation. Let church say presentation. You must present your will to God. You must yield your will to God. No longer independent entities. But now you belong to God. 
Oh, bless his name. You're no longer a part of what you used to be. You left that committee. You ain't on the used to committee anymore. Oh, bless his name. Paul says, present. In other words, there must be some presentation. God wants you to present yourself to him. To yield your will to his will. In other words, we must sell out to God's will. God's will is perfect. God's will is his word. You cannot live a victorious life in Christ. You cannot be an effective and efficient practitioner of the Christian life. Unless you present your will to God's will. Unless you yield your mind, body, and soul to God. Uh, so many people, as I preach this gospel this morning, uh, they will give their life to Christ. But they have not made a total commitment to yield their lives to Christ. I wish I had a witness in here. In other words, you make a good Sunday morning Christian. I'm a preacher in the house. You make a good 8 o'clock to 9.30, four times a month Christian. You Bible quote and scripture quote. You can sing all the great hymns of the Baptist church. But I want to tell you, my brother and my sisters, it's more than church and a text. I feel my help in here. It's more than looking good, smelling good, and driving good. JJ, God wants us to give him everything. Is there anybody in here? You got a presentation. You said, Lord, you saved my life. And that's enough to say hallelujah about right there. Anybody glad he saved your life? You ought to tell him thank you. You ought to thank him hallelujah. You ought to say bless his name. But I want to tell you as your pastor, friend and brother, it's more than salvation. You got to have a presentation. Not my will, but thine will be done. I'm going to tell you this and I'll be done and we'll have communion. Beloved, if you want power, if you want to live a victorious life, offer your life to God. Give him your mind, your body, and your soul. It's time out from playing church. It's way past that. God is looking for some 21st century Christians who will say like Hezekiah Walker, I'm sold out. I yield. I surrender. I give in. I give out. I give you all of me. God gave you all of his son in the person and work of Jesus Christ. In return, we must yield our will to God's will. I must tell you that God knows more about you than you know about yourself. You ought to yield.